These are the seven boot rules every man must know. Rule number one, if you're gonna buy cheap, you're gonna get cheap, and that's a fact. Let me demonstrate what I'm talking about here. Right here, I have a pair of cheap Chelsea boots cut in half, and I also have a pair of Chelsea boots from one of my favorite brands, Grant Stone. Now let's quickly take a look on the inside of both of these. So this is a pair of Blundstones, and as you can tell from the inside of this, it's all foam in the sole. There's fiberboard here. This is gonna break down really quickly. Now this here, on the other hand, is the Grant Stone Chelsea boot, and you got nothing but leather and cork all the way through this thing. And you can definitely even see like the steel shank in here, tons of cork. This is a thick piece of vegetable tan leather. So this boot compared to this boot, you can just tell by looking at it, which one's gonna last longer. Now you might say, well, the Blundstone is less expensive than the Grant Stone. So, you know, does it, does it equal out? Of course, if you don't pay as much, you're not gonna get as great quality materials. But if you consider the fact that a Blundstone's like 180 to 200 bucks versus this Grand Stone, which is like 350 to 400, somewhere in that range. Yes, the Grand Stone is roughly double the price of the Blundstone, but what you're getting in terms of quality, in terms of value, this is gonna last so much longer than two times as long. Blundstones, I know people say in the comments that like, no, I've had mine for 20 years. Well, if you do any sort of hardware, I'm horrible on my boots. So a pair of Blundstones, they're only gonna last me a year, two years, something like that. Whereas a pair of Grand Stone Chelsea's, this is gonna last me at least five years, but probably more like 10 to 15, given the fact that I have a lot of different other pairs of boots. So the value I'm getting from each of these, it doesn't even, it's not even close. Grant Stone is way more valuable to me and it's because of the way it's made on the inside. Not only the leathers, but the way it's constructed on the inside. So again, if you're gonna skimp, I don't recommend skimping on your boots because you're standing on this all day long and that's gonna take a beating no matter what you do, even if you work an office job. So to reiterate, if you're buying cheap, you're gonna get cheap boots, they're not gonna last. The second major boot rule, and this more applies when you start learning more about boots, you start getting more into the different styles and, and start learning about the construction methods, is that Goodyear welted boots, they're not everything. There's a lot of different types of construction. It's worth knowing the three main types of construction, and they're all, I wanna say like equally as good, though they have different purposes. Probably the most common boot construction method when you get into high quality boots is the Goodyear welt. Right here I'm holding the Thursday Captain and with Thursday boots they use a Goodyear welt and they really kind of brought the term Goodyear welt to the mainstream. You know, it's been a construction method for at least over 100 years. But when you hear Goodyear welt, it's basically just a method of boot construction where there is a piece of leather around here called the welt and boot makers essentially use that piece of leather to attach the upper leather to the sole. Now a lot of boots these days to, to really cut down on cost, the sole is just glued to the upper and that can cause a lot of problems down the road when that glue starts to wear down if they get wet at all then the sole starts separating from the leather up top. But with a Goodyear welt, you're getting a lot less of that. It's a much more sturdy construction. That said, a Goodyear welt is a good sign of quality, but it's not the end all be all. I've seen people on Reddit and in different forums and things like that saying like, oh, I want this boot, but it's not Goodyear welted. Is it gonna last? It has, let's say like a Blake stitch. Right here, I'm holding the Beckett Simonon Elliott. This is a Blake stitch boot. And I, there's nothing wrong with a Blake stitch boot. So I wouldn't, if you're thinking like, oh, this is not Goodyear welted. It's got a Blake stitch. Like Goodyear welt is the gold standard. Well, I wouldn't recommend passing up on a Blake stitch just because of that. Now it's true that Blake stitch boots don't have quite as much weather resistance. However, that said, I think that's pretty overblown. I've been in the rain, I've walked through puddles in Blake stitch boots and I haven't, my socks have never really gotten wet. It's not that much of an issue and people make a bigger deal out of it than it really needs to be. Some key benefits to a Blake stitch boot is that there's often a lot less material kind of in that insole and midsole area. So it has a lower profile. So I definitely, I actually recommend Blake stitch boots for dress boots because there's less material that kind of maintain a lower profile. They're usually lighter weight. Weight, they're a little bit more flexible. So all of those things I think are really beneficial for a pair of dress boots in particular. And you'll probably also hear about something called stitch down construction, which is basically the upper leather kind of flares out at the bottom and then is stitched through the midsole and the outsole. This right here is the Wesco Mr. Lou engineer boot. A lot of the Pacific Northwest boot makers like JK, NYX, Whites, Fiberg, they use stitch down construction. And that also, again, is a really, really solid method of construction. Obviously, if you talk to any of the Pacific Northwest boot makers, they say it's the best construction method, and there's a lot of validity to that. However, Goodyear welts are easier to resole because you can just kind of like, if it wears down, you can just replace it with a new welt. With stitch down construction, all of these, Blake stitch, stitch down, Goodyear welt, these are all recraftable, so you can get new soles added. So to recap the three construction methods and their key benefits, number one is the Goodyear welt. This is one of the most common for high quality boots. It's really easy to recraft, and it's a fairly inexpensive construction method in the whole realm of everything. So typically the best value boots that you'll find out there in terms of high quality 
are usually Goodyear welted. The second construction method to know is Blake stitch. And one of the key benefits here, while it's still recraftable, is that it's lower profile, more lightweight, usually a little slimmer. And so it works particularly well for dress boots. But even if you're seeing a rugged boot out there with a Blake stitch, I wouldn't necessarily pass it up just because it's Blake stitch and not Goodyear welted or stitch down. And then the third type to know is stitch down construction. And the key benefit here is around that front, there ain't no water getting in there no way, no how. And the second benefit is that it, it is also recraftable, although you're gonna wanna go, if you have a stitch down boot, you're gonna wanna you know, spend the money, spend the time going to a good cobbler so they can hit all those same holes and it still looks just as good as when you got it. And the third boot rule every man must follow is to use cedar shoe trees no matter what. Cedar shoe trees are gonna help keep the shape of the boot, they're gonna help keep the moisture really low, and they're gonna help keep the upper looking good. The fourth major boot rule that every guy should know is that you need to get high quality socks. Now, a lot of people start off with their first pair of socks being polyester, and that's because those pairs of socks could be two, three bucks, something like that, really cheap, you get them in big old bundle packs. So essentially, you're wrapping your feet in a trash bag, that's gonna make them way more sweaty, it's gonna give you more blisters, it's gonna be just generally uncomfortable because your feet feel all squinchy and wet all day, and that is not a good feeling. Now, people bump up, they get cotton socks, they think that's a lot better. However, with cotton, it just absorbs all the sweat, and so you're basically having the same problem at the end of the day. Now, True boot fans, they know you go with the top tier, you get merino wool. That is the best sweat wicking material on this planet in terms of what you can put on your feet. Now I've designed some socks that are specifically made for boots. It's called Camel City Mill. I have the lightweight here, both in black and gray, and I also have a heavyweight version. Now I wanna make it clear that if you're breaking in a new pair of boots, you don't necessarily need a heavyweight boot sock. I think that's something a lot of guys get wrong. They go, oh, I'm wearing boots. I need a very thick pair of socks. That's not true at all. A lot of people actually find out their boots fit much better if they have a lighter weight pair and so I do recommend the Camel City Mill Lightweight. It is my favorite boot sock and I spent so much time designing it. Number one, it's made with merino wool, so it's sweat wicking, it feels comfortable, it's soft. Number two, we have no sweat venting on the top and that basically is, we use a really specific type of merino wool called Ironside Merino Wool and that basically, it's super durable uh, for the way it's manufactured and that allows us to do a pretty fine mesh knit on the top on that no sweat vent, basically again, the top of your foot is where you release the most heat, the most moisture, so having a vent right there definitely helps keep your feet comfortable and cool all day long. So I mentioned Ironside Merino wool. Again, how we make the wool, basically the loom, it kind of rolls the fibers together, whereas modern looms uh, kind of spin it together. Because it's rolled, it ends up being a lot more durable, and because it's more durable, we actually offer a 10-year durability guarantee on these socks. So if you order them and they get a hole, any holes, any tears, anything like that, you can just send us an email, let me know, and we will give you brand new socks. Last thing to note on these socks, you can tell by this little American flag, these are made in the USA, so I'm here in North Carolina. Uh, these socks are made in North Carolina. They use USA wool, so these socks are American, baby. So for boot rule number four, if you are wearing cotton or polyester, it is time to upgrade, especially if you're gonna upgrade your boots and you're getting to $200 and $300 pairs of boots, then you need socks that go with that. You know, you don't cook a ribeye steak and then serve it on a paper plate. Now, if you're getting good quality boots, you need good quality socks. Now, boot rule number five, this will save you some money in the long run, especially if you have one or two pairs of boots that you kind of rotate between, you are going to eventually wear down the rubber top lift or the heel cap on your boots. Now it's fine to wear down that piece of rubber. That's gonna happen, that's inevitable. You don't need a full resole. So if the rubber heel cap wears out, you don't need to redo the whole sole. You just need to add a new rubber top lift on there. That's a really easy operation. A cobbler, uh, any cobbler can do that and they can do that for 30 bucks maybe. And that's basically just the cost of materials to glue it on there and to kind of sand it down and make sure it all that it's all flush. Now where we get into boot rule number five is that you should never ever eat into the leather. So if you see that heel wearing down and it starts to get pretty slanty and it's looking like it's getting really close to that piece of leather, get that replaced immediately. The reason why is if you start to eat into that leather heel stack, the work you need to get done on your boot goes from being 30 bucks to being like 170 bucks. And the reason why is if you eat into that leather, the cobbler's gonna have to take off every single piece of that leather heel stack because it just won't sit flush. If it's different types of leather, it's gonna look differently. So any skilled cobbler who wants to present a good product at the end, they're gonna have to redo that whole thing. And once you start replacing, you know, a piece of rubber costs a certain amount, but leather costs a lot more. So again, boot rule number five, replace that rubber top lift. As soon as you start to see it get pretty close to that leather, Never eat into the leather. Never eat into the leather. And the leather looks like delicious. Like I would, I would eat that. Boot rule number six that every guy needs to know, this one's really important in my opinion, is because so many guys think they need waterproof boots when they really don't. And this even includes like work boots. So if you're looking for a pair of work boots and you're being like, ah, this is a great looking boot, 
but it's not waterproof. It's just water resistant. You don't need, and I don't even think you want waterproof boots. Here's my reasoning why. Now, if a boot is waterproof, then it probably has a plastic lining all the way throughout at least the bottom part of the boot. That's the only way to truly, truly get a boot waterproof is to basically encapsulate the whole thing in plastic. And then, you know, you have your upper leather on the outside of that. And then you have a pretty tight cement construction below that as well. So while you will get a 100% waterproof boot, kind of running into the same issue that you were if you were getting polyester socks, it's like you're wrapping your foot in plastic. It ends up being a lot more uncomfortable. And a lot of guys are like, I can't figure out why my feet sweat so much in my work boots. And like probably rule number one is if you're wrapping your foot in plastic, it's gonna make them sweat. So again, that's like what waterproof boots do. So you keep the water out, but like basically you sweat your feet in there, you create little saunas and your feet feel uncomfortable, sweaty. You know, they get all wrinkly and stuff like that at the end of the day. So that's why I don't recommend a waterproof boot. And I say that because there are work boots right here. I have the JKOT, JK boots that make my favorite work boots. But basically this boot is not waterproof, quote unquote, but it is so water resistant that I don't know how you would get water into this boot. The way it's built, double row stitch down construction, the leather's so thick, the whole construction is so well done that you're just, you're not gonna get your feet wet in these things, even if you're standing in standing water. Like if you're in a puddle standing there, you might have to stand there for like three, four or five minutes inside of a puddle before your socks start getting wet. But other than that, a rainstorm, stepping in mud, going even going through a, a, a river or something like that, most likely that's not gonna get your feet wet. Now I'll say if you're working a job where you are in standing water for more than like two minutes, three minutes, or something like that, then just get a pair of rubber boots. Like wear your rubber boots for when you're standing in water and then just wear a great pair of work boots like the JKOT when you're not standing in water. But otherwise the whole idea that you need a pair of waterproof boots, uh, like, oh, it's gonna rain outside, I need a pair of waterproof boots, not not a thing. Any of the boots I mentioned, you know, the JKOT, this is a really tough boot, but even something a lot lighter duty like the Beckett Simonon Elliott, this dress boot right here, you can walk through the rain in this thing. Like it's not gonna hurt the boot. It's leather, if you just brush it down afterwards, it'll be fine. So rule number six, you don't need a waterproof boot, I promise you. My seventh boot rule that every man must know is that yes, you do need to condition your leather boots, but probably not as often as you think. So most of the time, just using a horsehair brush, kind of brush down your boots, remove the dirt. A lot of times that's gonna resurface a lot of the oils that are packed into the leather, depending on what kind of leather you have. If you put a cedar shoe tree in here and kind of brush back and forth with a horsehair brush, you would be surprised at how much that really brings your boots back to life. That said, you should still condition the leather on your boots, but how many times? There are some special cases where you're gonna to wanna to do it like once a month, but I'll talk about those in a little bit. But for most casual dress heritage boots, one to four times per year is about the sweet spot. For me, I condition my boots generally about once a year, and that is just to keep the leather supple, but at the same time, I really like the patina that builds up over time, and so I try to keep that as much as possible, and a really good way of doing that is just with the horsehair brush, but if you add a little conditioner on there once a year, that's definitely gonna keep the leather from cracking, it's gonna keep it looking really good, and it just brings your boots back to a baseline, and, and it's kind of fun to do once a year, just like condition all my boots. Now with some boots, I think they need a little care, so I'll probably do it twice a year on those ones. Sometimes I just want to condition boots, because it's a good way to just spend quiet time, I guess, so I might do it three times a year. On the high end, maybe four times a year, like once every three months. I'd say that makes sense if you have, say, two pairs of boots, you, you alternate between them or just like one pair of boots. The only times I would recommend conditioning more than that is if you have a pair of beefy work boots and you're like working in concrete or they're getting paint on them, or they're getting tons and tons of dirt and dust on them. Well, in those cases, you know, you might want to use something like saddle soap to kind of clean out the boots completely. And then if you're gonna use saddle soap, definitely use the conditioner after that because saddle soap does dry out the leather. Even if it says this has conditioning agents in it, it's soap, it's gonna dry out the leather. So definitely add conditioner on there. Also, particularly with concrete, that tends to dry out leather a lot. So in those cases, you might wanna condition your boots every, even up to every week. If, if you're in particular conditions, really, really wet or really, really harsh, where you need to clean off with soap at all. And in those cases, maybe up to a week, but even then, probably just once a month is good for you. Otherwise, boot rule number seven, I'd say maximum condition your casual boots every three months. I personally do it once a year, and that works for me because I do like to build up that patina. Now, if you want to see the best boots right now, check out this video right here. I'll see you there. Till then, put your best boot forward.